Welcome to Never Rewrite. I'm Isaac Askew. And I'm Jeffrey Sherman. And today we're going to talk about the beachhead strategy. So most of our uh, past episodes, we've been talking about the thesis shipping strategy, where <laughs> you're going to it iteratively replace the system you have with the same system by re- fixing things and replacing things and evolving it over time. And the core concept there is that you would never have two of the same systems, right? You would never do this uh, total rewrite idea and you would never have two systems that are supposed to do the same thing with a cutover. Mm -hmm. The beachhead strategy is a very specific way that you can say, okay, I do want two systems. And there is a very, very, you have to be very, very specific about how and why you're gonna do it, but it can be a very powerful thing to do uh, as an alternative to a rewrite. Interesting, okay. So the first thing that, like the name implies, the beachhead, you're going for, you're trying to establish a foothold. And it's when you have a system that has become a Swiss army knife of features. Uh, The example that you and I years ago worked together on a system that sent emails and it had a million features. And so it had a million branching code paths that would branch and code, come back and all these things. And because of that, it was fairly slow because it had to do check for this, check for that, check for this, check for that. Right. And you proposed what I'm gonna call now a beachhead of, hey, what if for this one specific email type, we know is doesn't need any of these other features so we come up with a code path or an alternative and it doesn't even check. It just right. doesn't go down any of these branching code paths, turn them off or make a new new function. And so the idea is we are going to extract one very specific scenario and we don't have to worry about all the edge cases that bog down a rewrite because we aren't going to handle them. We are saying, oh, here right. is the one scenario and there are no edge cases because that's how we're defining it. Mm-hmm. And if we get this one scenario out and we get it to production, then in an improved way, it will provide enough value to be worth it, even if we do nothing else. And that's the beachhead. So instead of a full rewrite where I have to where we have to encounter every possible code path and all the edge cases, which is where you, things go to die, yeah. <laughs> you say, no, 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 I'm only covering this one scenario. Right. And at the time, it almost felt like um, increasing the tech debt, right? Mm -hmm. Because it's like there's more conditionals in the code. You haven't really refactored so much as to add like a, uh, instead of going down this path that's super intensive uh, and very slow because we're trying to apply all kinds of, call all the kinds of nested functions and nested functions on this data. If we know we don't need all those nested functions and we can do an alternative, let's just go to the right instead. Uh, so the concept was almost like a fast lane on a highway, right? Mm-hmm. Where you have like fast lane, if you if you qualify for it, you can really get there a lot faster, whereas the rest of the folks still go on the, uh, the right-hand side. Right, and it's got limitations, right? If you're, if you're in the fast lane, you don't get as many exits. Right. But if you know that, so you don't have two full systems going, but you have your general system and then you have a very specific implementation that is much less feature rich. And that's kind of one of the keys there is it it must be much less less feature rich and Mm -hmm. it must serve a very specific customer oriented goal. In this case, it could send emails a lot faster because the emails were simple and we knew it. We knew it in advance. These are going to be simple emails, Mm -hmm. right? Turn off all the checks and just shoot as fast as possible. So I guess another way of thinking about it is instead of, or another way of rephrasing what you've said is instead of refactoring uh, everything for a piece of code or for a feature that is customer facing, if you can identify a segment or a large segment of customers that would benefit from uh, a small change to your feature, Mm -hmm. uh, you can target that segment instead and solve the problem for that piece of users without having to spend all of the time completely rebuilding the entire feature. Right, because part of the requirement is 
this new thing goes into production immediately. Right? You never have yeah. a thing that you're building over a new system that you're building over here. It you have a piece of a new system, you know, just the fast lane piece. If you think if you're going to go with the highway fast lane metaphor, you already have a highway. It already has bridges. It has right of way. It has you know it's been leveled and graded. <laughs> Adding another lane that is the fast lane is much less difficult than saying, I'm going to build a new highway next to this one. And then I <laughs> right. will move over. Got it. Uh, so if you want to do that, right? So if you have identified, hey, I have this possibility. And I, what brought me to thinking about this is I'm examining a case in my current work where I've got a similar possibility of data importing, but for onboarding customers. And so in this case, I we have a very rich data importing system, mm -hmm. but if I'm onboarding a customer, I know they don't have any history. And so I could turn off most of the checks and balances, or I think I could turn off, I haven't actually tried it yet. <laughs> gotcha. The theory is that the thing that got me, reminded me of this pattern that you and I found I guess it's a strategy is I, uh, you know, here's a very specific scenario. It's a new customer. Mm -hmm. And because it's a new customer, I know they don't have history. And because they don't have history, I don't need to, to worry about any of those checks. Right. And it, you know, it's a very specific scenario where I don't have to do a lot of things. And so it's okay. Assuming my idea holds water and I could, you know, I, after looking at the code, I could actually turn off significant things. What would I do to create the fast lane, right? So here in this scenario, I've got an import, you know, I'm bringing in, I've got a new customer, I need to bring on their data, mm -hmm. which you want that to be as fast as possible so that your customer has a good experience right out the gate. You, you want it to be fast as possible in general and have the customer have a good experience in general, but if six when months later can't. they need, to, yeah. Well, if, if six months later they need to refresh and you need to check and see what has changed and if anything is different, so that you can call back with webhooks and other, you mm -hmm. know, different diffing techniques, so that you can have you know trigger things on changes. Those are all important, and those are all going to make things slow. It it's just the reality of the beast, right? And so what would I do to, to make things faster? The, and the first thing in my head is, oh, well, can I actually identify that somebody's a new customer and that this is their initial data import and so that I don't have to check things? Mm -hmm. So that would be the first thing is actually find out, can I make a, a fast lane? Cool, I can, or I think I can. And the second thing that I would do would be to simply mark where I could, you know, it, where in the flow I could segment apply the the changes. Like, you know, where would the entrances and exits to my highway fast lane be? Mm -hmm. And then, once I've got some of the entrances and exits marked, and this is where I'm going to start thesis shipping again, <laughs> is I don't need to fix. I don't need to change everything. If I could change one, you know, we'll go with the highway again. If I could change, if I could create a fast lane between these two exits, entrance, you know, for just this one section of road, then I would be able to time it and see how much faster it is. And then I'd be able to have some kind of idea of it. Is this even worthwhile? Is it worth continuing? Right. And so instead of having, you know, a whole you know, here's the regular system and then here's the fast lane. It's, oh, here's the regular system and here I'm going to have this, you know, it's a fork and branch thing. And I would slowly pull out further and further more and more of the parallel path. And as, over time, that would get me a fast lane in my beachhead. And if that's good, I could then start importing more features into the fast lane. Yeah, and, so I was about to suggest something like that because the fast line could become eventually the the, the main lane if it serves ninety mm percent -hmm. of your base. And while you make that new fork, you could probably easily test that because it's brand new functionality 
wrap that with tests, it serves a really good purpose. Then you can, that helps you do the thing we talked about earlier, where you're like, you, you learn more of the system. So, you know, which features exist as you're trying to port them over, then you can test them one by one. Mm -hmm. Right. This is the, you are doing a full, you hopefully will end up doing a full rewrite, but because you've started with the beachhead, you have something in production that is useful to your current customers, right? You have something that is in production that is useful and valuable to customers. And now you can cut over or expand the feature set over time as it's valuable. And if it's not valuable, then you wouldn't ever do it. You know, I'd say almost, <clears throat> it's almost not maybe a full rewrite in this case. Cause I think a lot of times when we think about full rewrites, we're thinking about a brand new repo potentially mm -hmm. in a brand new language that's like more modern whereas this one's more like it's the same repo it's the same language it's a new functionality within that current system so it's like a there's another word for this we have to use i suppose so we don't confuse the listener <laughs> you could call it a fork a fork yeah but i'm not sure that it has to be it depends on how your system is designed mm -hmm. because if you're if you've got a service oriented architecture then you don't necessarily, you know, the the two the cutovers, the on on, on lane and off lanes, mm -hmm. those could be calls to external external services, and you could be switching between them. So if you have a service oriented architecture, and you know you're going to import your customer's data, it's possible that hey, in the original version with this import, let's say, mm -hmm. I need to say, here's a bunch of data, find me the diffs. Okay, now I need to apply the diffs so that it works correctly. And then in the fast lane, where I'm saying, this is a new customer, there are, there's no current data, I can skip that entire call and just apply everything. Right. And in the case of this thing, because I know I don't need to apply diffs, I could just go straight to insert this data which would be a diff it would be entirely different setup of how I'm going to do my SQL. And so it would be, you know, if I had a service oriented architecture, in this case, I don't, those would be different call outs, different, there could be different services, you know, a straight through insert this, if it's valid versus a diff this, and then insert the changes. Makes so. sense. So I guess the, the next thing is, okay, so we talked about when it's a good idea. Let's talk about when it's a bad idea, right? So <laughs> if you can't put it into production immediately, it's a bad idea. Well, it's not It's not a good idea for that. It's not a good use case, right? So if you've got a, hey, I just want to deal with, you know, I've, I've got some edge cases, but it's, oh, I'm going to deal with customers that are like this. But I need to rewrite, an, uh, I want to write a whole new framework on a whole new system, so it's going to take me six months. Then it's not a beachhead. If Got it's, it. you know, if it's not small, like if you need to know more than, if you're not stripping things out, right? If you're not saying, oh, I could strip down what we currently have and, you know, smooth the pathway, even if I'm rewriting it so that it's simple, and simple will make it fast. It's not a good, this isn't the right pattern for you or strategy for you because it's not, the whole idea is you under, you have very good understanding of the problem domain mm -hmm. and you don't need to know about the million and one edge cases that cause the whole thing to be crufty because you have specifically designed not to have it. And right. it's a fairly rare thing. Hmm? Well, it, it's almost like, um, I guess the, the different differentiator there is like, let's say you have uh, you have identified a segment of the population that would qualify for something that would make things faster for them or make your throughput faster for them. And you've ported uh, things over. So what remains on the other side after you've ported over the main functionality that serves a, a fairly large sized segment are those edge cases you're talking about. So essentially you've you've left others in the slow lane because those are the complicated people. <laughs> mm -hmm. Those are the ones that need all the bells and whistles and all the checks for this and that and the other and personalization and all this kind of thing. Um, so it's, 
it's an interesting concept to split the, split them because it kind of helps you reflect. You can kind of see how your original uh, feature that you built was meant to serve all all populations. Mm-hmm. But as your company has grown, you can see like an unfair uh, balance of slowdown for all the people who don't need this particular slowdown. So splitting it apart is like a, almost a really good thought exercise to kind of reevaluate what your product's doing. So it really does help you. Like, like you're saying here, you need a really good understanding of your system to be able to do mm-hmm. this. Uh, this is something that kind of has to, that has to come. This approach has to come after a product has somewhat matured, it seems. Yeah, for sure. Uh, I was trying to think of uh, some real life examples. One that I came up with was uh, TurboTax works really well if you have if you're if you're an employee like if you're in the U.S. and you're an employee of a of a company and you get a W two and you don't have any investments and you you just have that's your only income you could use TurboTax and it's really fast and it's pretty cheap much cheaper than a an accountant right and it's fast. And if you've got, you know, if you're self-employed or you've got two or three side jobs or you've got investments or real estate, you probably want to hire an accountant and it's going to be slower. It's more expensive, but it's more complex. And so TurboTax is the, look, we're going to handle the simple case. And I think that they have expanded over the years. Right. But they, in the beginning, they handled the simple case of, look, we're just going to handle W2 employees who don't have any side things and we're going to do a good job for that. And that, you know, is faster and cheaper. And it covers so many people. Like right, most covers... people are not, you know, throwing a ton of stuff in the stock market or have three businesses to manage. Right. It covers probably 60% of the American population. All right. Uh, we seem to have run out of steam. So maybe this is uh, where we leave it. <laughs> all right so let's do a quick summary then okay um how are you defining uh let, let's get, let's get a good definition of this uh what, what was the uh, beach beach head strategy? beachhead strategy uh the beachhead strategy is instead of thesis shipping instead of iteratively improving and trying to make your thing better you are going to create a stripped down version of your product that only handles a single use case and so it doesn't have to deal with the edge cases yeah. And you will, and that will allow you to create something much better than, or much faster and much more scalable, better, better in some definition that you have version for a significant percentage of your customers. Uh, and then you can improve it over time. And this is most useful, it seems, for companies that have a particular feature that is already somewhat mature um, and then maybe maybe is going through some kind of squeeze from a, you know data or a traffic or a volume perspective mm-hmm. uh, and and for folks who know their system very well and they can go oh well we we see that most people don't need all these bells and whistles let's ship them them over here and that way their experience is a little bit faster yes very good call it's for mature products that have become feature rich where you can identify a significant subset of your com- of your customers who don't need any of those features. All right, well, we've created we created two terms here. We got DC ship. We've got the uh, or is this, is this a brand new strategy name that you come up with? No, I mean calling something a beachhead is I, I think it's a military term. You know, the idea that you're literally going to yeah, but in, in development has it been used? Uh, <laughs> Are you I the first to, to use it in this way. <laughs> okay. I, I don't think this is a original term of mine. Ah, bummer. <laughs> we got to brand it. <laughs> it's all right. It, it's better that it is easily identifiable when you tell tell people that you need to establish a beachhead of something. True. That they know what you're talking about. Whereas thesis ship requires a bit of... <laughs> yeah, you got to explain it. <laughs> and you go, like, oh, well, right. it's, it's a playoff of Ship of Theseus. And you have to explain that. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're, you are not going to get any more. Oh, of course, there's the ship of Theseus. Let's talk about Everyone knows Theseus. Of course, it's every every developer knows that, especially the ones who didn't grow up uh, in the U.S. <laughs> have to take a bit of Greek history because you do. All right.
Awesome. Well, thank you for listening. I'm Jeffrey Sherman. And I'm Isaac Askew. And this is Never Rewrite.